we we grew up with the big box movies, the uh, the movie theaters, the Terminator 2s, and this is just a media consuming culture over here. And if you are going to attack this country, the best way to do it is to hijack four studios. We have a new mini series coming out. We've talked about Disney a lot on, on the you know on the channel. I think it's impossible not to talk about Disney and, and all the insanity that's going on with that. But they have a new mini series coming out. Have you heard of Echo Salty? Have you heard yeah. of this mini series? Yeah, I just saw I saw that uh but I, I heard about the Echo uh teaser trailer where they were talking about it, and then they showed this uh fight scene. Mm -hmm. And it was hilarious because boy that fight scene looks atrocious but they are all convinced that it is great i'm sitting there going have you not seen like old school it's old school movies these days craig but uh, like right. fight scenes from 300 i think are probably and that that was done almost what 15 years that was so long ago and i'm sitting there going it looks like they're dancing in this and maybe that was the the effect but there, there's there's no kinetic impact with anything that's going on with it, it looks like um i it, it it looks like play fighting almost and i was sitting there going this is supposed to be a serious fight because it looks like it's supposed to be like a dark series right right and i'm, I'm like this is atrocious but all of these people who've uh, lined up uh behind disney are absolutely convinced that it looks great and this is just that low watermark of mediocrity right well, they have, um, so that, that was definitely being passed around social media the last couple of days, just the, the fight scene as a whole. And we can get into that for sure. But uh, for those who don't know, this is from Wikipedia. Echo is an upcoming American t uh, miniseries uh, going to be on Disney Plus, And it's going to be based off of a Marvel Comics character named Echo, which I am not familiar. Have you ever heard of Echo before? The, the character? Yeah, you have she was in what? What? What show was she recently in? Wasn't she in Hawkeye's show? Once again, I I don't want didn't watch that either. But uh, yeah, she was in Hawkeye. That's why. But she, like the character existed obviously in the comics, from what I understand. All right. So here's the premise. Uh, obviously, following the events of Hawkeye in New York City, uh, Maya Lopez is is being pursued by Wilson Fisk organization, leading her to return to her hometown of Oklahoma, where she must. She must come to the terms with her past, reconnect with her Native American roots, and embrace her family and community. Okay, so so here we go. We got it. We got our story here. Now, our friend Disparu over on uh, on Twitter has has taken some stuff from uh, the Screen Rant press junket that they went to, and this was amazing. Um, as you would expect, this is this is Disney in 2023, 2024. Uh, I wanted to share this with you because this was awesome. Um, here is uh, here's what they said at the press junket about Echo. And I'm guessing this is the lead actor here or actress. I think so many people feel like this project might be checking boxes in some way, but it's a it's a great story first and foremost that happens to center around an indigenous Choctaw community and around a deaf indigenous protagonist. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, God, sorry, that hack just drives. Absolutely. Um, so I would just like to uh, point out the number of ists. Like she, she literally starts saying, saying, "Hey, a lot of people think this may uh, may check the boxes," but she goes on to say this: "Talked about community and around a deaf indigenous protagonist. A deaf indigenous protagonist, and we've done it. We've done it, salty. We solved it. What's her sexual orientation? Too, I need to know that. Mm, good point." Uh, Blabs, can you please find the sexual orientation of of the of the character? Because I may or may not watch the show based solely on that. Just so you know. So yeah, it's like they've got a. It, it was funny because that's kind of you know a meme. That's an attack. That, that, there's a checklist, and now we yes. force them to acknowledge there's a checklist, and they're doing it in press junk. It's like, okay, well, you might think there's a checklist, but hey, take a look at all these things on the checklist that we have. I'm like, oh my god, you guys are just walking right into it, right? But it continues. It continues, Salty, because um, <laughs> I, I, I guess the the character being Echo. I'm guessing she's deaf. I mean, hence the hence the you know right. Uh, which hey, great, cool. I'm glad that's your defining feature. Uh, but here we go. This is um, this is the next thing that's said here. What did you guys learn about yourselves through playing Henry and Bonnie? I think what I learned about myself uh, portraying this was. Um, that I have a lot of um, hearing privilege, uh, being somebody who walks around the world as a as a hearing person. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> is this like the the actual Echo actress? Because I don't think it's her. I think she's another character in it. Hey, all I know is that she 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 in. She's got hearing privilege. That's all I got. <laughs> As a hearing person, by the way, Vlad. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My bad, so, my bad. That's right, you hearing person. By the way, take note of the virtue signaling as she signs this. Well, not she doesn't sign anything else, but she signs this here. I have a lot of um, hearing privilege. Uh, <laughs> she actually takes time to virtue signal. Uh, being somebody who walks oh, around the world as... Sorry, I love it. Oh, my God, just drives me crazy. Who owns Turok? Is, I mean, you know, if you're... There's 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 plenty of ways to expand the diversity of of media in an organic way that's got an installed fan base. I mean, of millions of people, the, those games have sold just millions and millions and millions of copies. You would be able to make a a show based around a character that people love and fill out all of your boxes that you guys love so much. And boy, they just refuse to do it. Well, I, I love that uh, we have a new term based off this interview. The idea of hearing privilege. Hearing Congratulations. Are you a hearing person, Salty? Huh? Yeah. What? <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's... I've, I've gone and Googled uh, echo sexual orientation. Oh, I did not find anything, so I'm assuming she's straight. How, how like, dare you assume? Like... I, I know. know. I'm Why? an istinophobe. I should be canceled. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'm surprised that it's not screamed out there. That's how yeah. you know she's, she must be one of those filthy cis. If if they're not, uh, if you don't yeah. know, yeah, if you don't know her sexual orientation, then she's a filthy cis. There's like whole documents full of like MCU characters that are gay, and I'm like, okay, oh. okay, oh, but she's not on it, so I guess no. she's not gay or anything. But she checks other boxes, yeah, uh, mm, and that's all that matters. That's right. Congratulations. Yes. When do you think Disney's actually going to take take the next step? And like, they've lost. You know, we talked about Star Wars yesterday, Salty, and Salt, and, and they were like, we got this woman director. And it's like, cool. Like, I, here's the thing that people don't understand. The people that are like our, our, our critics, they don't understand that we don't care as long as they do the job good. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or black or white or gay or straight. Just do your job great. And if, it, if your job's great, like, doesn't matter. Right. But when you come out and say, you know, here I am, I, I am a, a smart, strong woman. I am, uh, I am a deaf indigenous, uh, native American from Oklahoma and I will, you know, solve world problems. Like that's where, that's where the issues light up. Don't make it such a big characteristic, uh, of, of you as a person. So going back to, uh, what Adam, our boy, Adam Krigler says, if that's your, if that's your defining characteristic. You're really fucking boring. You know, yeah, so. I, I think there's I think there's a little bit of a an insidious approach to what's going on here because they it's they keep doing this and they're they're not interested in actually making money. I mean, you guys have detonated multi billion dollar franchises in order to do this, and when you when you take a look at what the other political spectrum is saying whenever it comes to this type of stuff, they take. They take our reactions. Like I, I don't care who's the director. I don't. I don't care the skin color of the the person or the the religion. I don't care about any of these characteristics. I'm just looking for some escapism. But the left hand side, overly broadly speaking, is is looking at those reactions and they get it filtered through Screen Rant. They get it filtered through Deadline Hollywood. They get it filtered, and then what gets back to those people is that oh, we're just upset because we're racist and we're homophobes and transphobes and and uh, Muslim phobes and all this type of stuff. And it reinforces what these people are thinking as an overall overarching boogeyman. So when you see Disney and uh, these other corporations and they're constantly doing this race baiting and this race swapping in order to gin up this um, these conversations, they might not be making physical currency, like like money at the box office, but boy, they take in an entire block of real stupid people with limited scope and reinforcing all of this uh, notion that there's, there's just flaming racists overwhelming the system out there. And so I think there's a, there's a benefit to a hijacked uh, Hollywood to do that. So you asked about who owns Turok. 
And uh, as pointed out in the chat by uh, Professor Plague Bat, Disney owns Turok. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I mean, it, this, there are just some things out there that are guaranteed money. See, they're not interested in in making money. You could take that character, you can scream wokeism and all that. You can you can even add your woke to this. There's a, there's a bona fide character with an installed fan base. And they just refuse. They'll take some ancillary character from three comic books of Daredevil and make an entire streaming service around this character just so they can scream, well, you're really privileged. I'm sitting there going, this is madness. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, I like how did how i'm sure you you've you've really analyzed this like how did we get here i i think that we're in a we're, we're in a a um there, there's there seems to be a an a, a world war going on that is being fought in a fashion that people aren't really used to or accustomed to so people are looking for airplanes they're looking for battleships they're looking for tanks rolling down their streets and that's a real stupid, uh, outdated way of fighting somebody. Um, a better way to do it is to hijack their their public education system, hijack their music, hijack their the our our civilization. This country, especially our age range, we 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 grew up with the big box movies, the uh, the movie theaters, the Terminator twos, and this is just a media consuming culture over here. And if you are going to attack this country, the best way to do it is to hijack four studios in Hollywood and have them really amp up the this race baiting, this race war, this um, the schisming of, of different people based on uh, real stupid characteristics when you get right down to it, um, and then get us all in fighting, and then everything that's happening in the background, no one's paying attention. No one's paying attention to a Nintendo Switch costing 400 bucks. Nobody's paying attention to your grocery bill going through the roof. Nobody's paying attention that we can't afford to heat our houses. Everyone's focus on people's skin color or their sexual orientation and it's all being amplified by this uh, media industrial complex can we win against this stupidity this insanity yeah, yeah i think as long as you continue to as, as long as I, I i think like 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 this 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 channel's a, a good example um people are understanding it's okay to say no it's okay to stand up it's okay to say listen i don't want to watch echo because it looks stupid like you, you a lot of places were afraid to say that and so you're seeing you're seeing a lot of people standing up a lot of people recognizing that it's fine to, to say no to this nonsense and then you're watching parallel economies being born i would rather watch your show making fun of echo than watching echo and these idiots are going to dump millions tens of millions of dollars into that stupid show and it's going to end up costing them financially they can only do that for so long